Sure. Silence. <laughs> All right then. One, two, three. Hi, my name is Nishant Mittal. And I'm Sarthak Bharadwaj and welcome back to another episode of I Read This Book. In this episode, we're going to feature a very special guest. She's Ashisha Chakraborty. I recently met Ashisha and, you know, as I generally do, I tell her about, I told her about the 52 books in a year campaign that we used to run, we've been running. And uh, generally people get impressed <laughs> and <laughs> that's, but this time I got a very... Uh, surprising response that oh you read 50 bo- 52 books that's great i i read 60 <laughs> <laughs> which was very surprising of course and then uh, we the conversation built on and we found out that ashish is a marathon reader she's read 60 more than 60 this year 80 the year before 100 even before that so it's incredible we you know we're so glad to have ashisha on this episode of i read this book indeed uh, we're very pleased to have you here ashisha uh the book we are reviewing in today's episode is something that Ashisha has read. It's called Celestial Bodies. So Ashisha, I, I want to ask you, what made you pick this book up out of all the books that you've read? If you could just give me a brief summary which sort of answers that question. Okay. Hi guys. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. And thank you so much for the illustrious introduction. <laughs> I feel very flattered. Uh, this book is actually very close to my heart because it's not just the Booker Prize winning novel but also uh, the title. The title is beautiful. It sounds like a science fiction or something which might be completely different but it's actually fiction and it's a narrative, a poetic kind of fiction. So it's my favorite genre. I That's mm. why I chose it. What does the book talk about? So the book talks about three generations uh, in Oman and it talks about how uh, three different sisters have their lives interconnected and uh, how they live their lives and how it changes over time so it's it's a very complicated narrative but the the author has been able to you know God get it in a very cohesive manner mm-hmm. you know I, I want to ask you a follow-up question on similar lines like you said, this book has a complicated plot. Nishant also mentioned that. And often I feel a book which has multiple characters and multiple plots running simultaneously, it becomes uh, excessively difficult for the reader as well as the author to weave a coherent plot. Do you think, the, although you did mention in passing that the author manages to achieve that, can you talk a little more about it? Sure. So, as I said... The narrative is a bit complicated because it is on different timelines and when you start the book, the first chapter is from the perspective of the first sister, the eldest sister Maya. And the second chapter goes on uh, from the perspective of her husband. So it moves on accordingly and that's in a different timeline. So at first a reader would have to just pause and think that okay, we are going to talk about this, we are talking about this and suddenly it's in a completely different uh, phase. But then I think that's the beauty of it, mm. you know. That's how different narratives flow. Brilliant. So This book is coming from an Omani author. And uh, I don't know any other Omani author, to be honest, apart from the girl. How is Oman? <laughs> yeah, how, how did you perceive Oman? I, I guess you, have, you haven't physically been there. Was the author... Capable able to enough? create a beautiful image of the place? Was, able to tra- was she able to transport you? to the mystic land of Middle East? That's it's a good question. Uh, yes, it's very important for the author to actually project a very good image of a place. So, for instance, Middle Eastern authors have been suddenly come onto the scene what with Khaled Hussain and then mm. Elif Shafak with the Bastard of Istanbul, you know, taking Turkey tourism at its complete height and uh, the 40 rules of love. So, uh, this woman, uh, Jokha Alharthi, has recently come on the scene with her third book, which is the first book, I think, which has been translated into English by Marilyn Booth. And uh, she has been able to pers- bring a very good picture of Oman. So it's not just, so we know Oman's capital is Muscat, and that's all we know about it. But that's not all. So there are these little cities and little pockets and little villages where people live and where people dream and where people think of. Uh, achieving something and of going somewhere so she has been able to do that I would say quite perfectly okay so by good you don't mean 
white you mean <laughs> a good colored it has different shades of the place it's not a rosy picture which has been created of amanda absolutely okay. it's not rosy at all it talks about slaves mm-hmm. it talks about um, the revolutions that happened there it also talks about a spark in those women so feminism just you know uh, starting in bits and spurts and then finally in the third generation when the girl london so the uh, protagonist's daughter is named london specifically that's one uh, very anomaly in there and it's a beautiful thing and then you realize that yeah it's very beautiful the way it progresses and it's not white and black at all it shows a lot of aspects of everything fun fact uh, oman had a thing for slavery till 1970s Wow, I absolutely have no knowledge of that fact. That's amazing. Yes, it did, and uh, Oma is so. There is this character who who buys a slave for I am not sure how many rupees it is, and I don't even remember the currency. But it's like about you can buy bread or you can buy a slave. It was like that. Just fifty years ago, man. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I want to ask you. you are an avid reader you are a voracious reader who reads extensively so of course for you to pick up any book and enjoy it is an easy task but this book would you recommend to someone who is just starting out with reading um i would say that a beginner might not enjoy the book so much however somebody who is looking for a taste of the middle east or a taste of an exo- exotic locale or a different culture would definitely love this book because it gives you a heart to heart account of how things work so for instance you talk about the city of joy and you know how it talks about calcutta yeah. and you get a feel of it similarly when you see uh, we when you read william dalrymple's uh, the last mughal oh i've read that book i i love william dalrymple so i've got to you uh, please go okay. <laughs> so as as i say that you you know you can see the mughal empire flourishing so that's exactly. how she does it and if somebody enjoys historical fiction or a uh, fiction that you know uh, emanates from different pockets of the world i'm sure that person will definitely enjoy this book brilliant but in the last mughal that's actually about the fall of the mughal empire and not the flourishing right. mughal empire but also okay we're not talking about the last mughal no, but, I mean, but since the conquest <laughs> yeah but it uh, also talks about how cosmopolitan delhi used to be ah right of before, course before that's before true. the british you know that's did, that's true partitioned india that's true. and pakistan mm-hmm, so indeed. that's something which comes out very well it's interesting that's pretty good so would you i mean uh, if you're recommending this book to anybody uh what would be your words what would you say before handing it over so i will um talk about one quote that i remember from the book it's uh, of all the celestial bodies the closest the one closest to the matters of the lower world is the moon and it's a perfect gift if you just write this quote in a fortune cookie <laughs> and you attach a book to it i think that's the perfect gift ever that's beautiful so that's very nice so you should not forget to thank me the audience for such amazing <laughs> gift ideas yeah. Wow. yeah i think that's a beautiful note to yeah end this it's conversation it's a good conversation on. great conversation ashika uh, ashish it was sorry I, it was lovely to have you here with us and hope we can do it another time as well Yes, yes, it was lovely indeed. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. I yeah. loved it. <laughs> we are really happy uh, to have done the fourth episode. I hope we hope that you enjoyed it as well. If you liked it, then do tell us in the comment section and like the video, share, subscribe. You know the usual. And more importantly, if you didn't like the video, be sure to tell us. Dislike the video, share it with your friends, and tell them how bad it is <laughs> we're looking forward to that <laughs> uh, social media currency this <laughs> uh, great see you thank see you see you next time bye bye